how can you ensure that your team meetings are productive and efficient while also keeping your team members engaged and motivated? Believe you me, the struggle is real. So in this video, I'm gonna provide you with some essential tips and strategies to help you run a successful team meeting that will inspire your team and drive success. Welcome to the channel, Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help you become a more confident leader and I do this with no nonsense sense if that makes any sense. As a new manager, you may find yourself struggling to lead your team effectively during meetings. And if this sounds even a little like you. Watch and learn, my friends, because as with most things, it doesn't have to be so hard. Let's first understand why we need meetings to be successful in the first place. Successful meetings do a couple of things. First, they help us share ideas, give feedback, and to provide updates. If meetings are well-structured, you can help your team align their goals and objectives with that of the organization, but also you as a leader are able to help boost your team morale and ultimately you can increase productivity and efficiently. But let's talk real numbers, some real facts. If you hold regular team meetings, you are two and a half times more likely to be to have a high performing team. According to Harvard Business Review, and effective meetings increase productivity by up to 30% according to Forbes. Now, these are some great numbers to consider as you plan your next meeting. So, we understand how these productive meetings can help us, but how exactly do we plan out our meetings? Great question. First, you've heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. We want to make sure that we're setting clear expectations. This is going to do a couple of things. It's going to put everyone on the same page. It's going to clarify the purpose of the meeting and it's going to reduce confusion and ultimately make for a better use of time. How we do this is rather simple. We use clear and concise language to describe the purpose of the meeting. Share the agenda with team members in advance, ideally within the, you know 24 hours prior. We're gonna prioritize the agenda items based on their relevance and importance. And we're going to encourage our team members to review the agenda and come prepared with any necessary information or materials. We want to make sure as leaders that we are providing context for each agenda item. This includes why it's important and what outcome is expected. See, this is not so hard. Your next step on this road to a successful meeting is to set the agenda. We wanna, let's, let's start this with best practices. I mean, obviously we only do best practices here on this channel. Start light. Welcome everyone. If there's anything interesting going on in the world, talk about it assuming it's light. We're not talking about politics or viruses or just any of that dumb crap that just brings everybody down or causes conflict. That's not the foot we're jumping off with. Once you're ready to roll up your sleeves, you will want to start the meeting with the most important agenda items. Agenda items, again, should be listed as clear, specific action items with time estimates for each agenda item to be spoken about. Be sure that you have incorporated some time for questions and discussions and, uh, and feedback. And be sure to follow up with any required action items or next steps. Now, the question might be, how do we prioritize agenda items for this meeting? First, identify the most pressing topics and prioritize those at the very beginning of the meeting. Consider the urgency and the importance of each item. Think about which items will have the greatest impact on achieving your team's goals or your team plan. Look to group related items together to keep the meeting focused. Avoid scheduling too many agenda items. Sometimes this is like, we got to talk about it all. We don't. Don't put too much in or you're not gonna do well discussing anything. So now my question to you is, have you ever had a meeting just go off the rails? <laughs> I've had one or two. 
So let's talk about how we're going to stay organized and stay on track. First thing, start and end the meeting on time. This is a huge sign of respect to your team at the very least. You want to assign a meeting facilitator to keep the discussion on track. It could be you, but it could be someone else. And we want to make sure that we record action items and decisions that are made during the meeting. Be sure to use visual aids such as a whiteboard or a shared screen to keep everyone focused and encourage your team members to avoid side conversations or distractions. I know, coffee, donuts, people start talking, but we gotta stay focused. Be sure that we're following up on any action items or decisions made during the meeting. Now, in order to manage your time effectively for this meeting, do the following. Set specific time limits for each agenda item. Use a timer if you have to, to keep the discussion moving and avoid overrunning the meeting. Also encourage team members to be concise and to the point. Address off topic discussions and tangents politely, but firmly. Now, this sounds pretty strict, at least it, to me it does. And it's because we have other things to do. Your team needs their time to do their jobs as you do as well. Now with that said, we want to be encouraging participation in our meetings. We want to encourage team members to contribute their perspectives. In order to do this, be sure that you use open-ended questions to promote discussion, to promote engagement. You want to avoid dominating the conversation yourself or allowing one or two team members to dominate it. Get everyone involved and be mindful of nonverbal cues such as body language or tone that may indicate some reluctance or discomfort. One thing that has the most impact on an effective meeting is to avoid distractions. Consider holding a meeting in a distraction-free environment. I know, easier said than done, but discourage the use of cell phones or other devices during the meeting. Address any distractions or disruptions politely, but firmly. Now, the best way that you're going to make sure you're getting the most out of your meeting is your team engagement. You need your team to take part. You need your team to take ownership, to take accountability. So we will start off with an icebreaker or an opening question to engage participation. Pay attention to your audience. Meaning, if they hate cheesy name games, Maybe we don't have to do that. I mean, okay, I don't like it, and it's not all about me, but I can't be the only one here. Comment below what icebreakers you've actually liked or that at least <laughs> they weren't so bad. Next, use open-ended questions to promote the discussion and the engagement. Encourage your team members to share their perspectives, to share their ideas. Make sure that we're building in time for team members to give feedback and to ask questions actively. Listening and acknowledging your team members' contributions is a great way for them to know you are paying attention and that you are listening. We also wanna be providing feedback, specifically constructive feedback. Now to do this, you want to be specific and clear when you're providing feedback to your team. You want to make sure that you're offering your feedback in a constructive and non non judgmental way. Focus on behaviors or actions rather than personal characteristics. Offer suggestions for improvement and support for making changes. And of course, follow up on the feedback and track progress. This shows your support. This shows your investment in your team. Now, another way to get your team to really contribute to these meetings is that we want to make sure that we're recognizing contributions. Now, I'm not saying that anytime someone opens their mouth, you swoon all over them like a baby saying their first words. But instead, make sure that you're acknowledging your team members' contributions during the meeting. Publicly offer praise and recognition for jobs well done. Provide opportunities for your team members to share their successes and accomplishments or that of their team. Don't be afraid to offer some sort of incentives for outstanding performance and encourage your team members to recognize and celebrate each other's accomplishments. Again, this is all stuff that you need to pay attention to because it's not hard. You just need to know what to do. Now, 
What if you've never hosted a team meeting before or you're still just a little unsure of how to successfully do it? Watch this video next because I share the first things that you need to consider when you're hosting one of your first meetings. So get your coffee. I'll see you there. Ciao.